MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage, bringing the world of mixed martial arts straight to you. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, the undisputed king of Las Vegas, Mr. Casey Oxendine. We'll move over Wayne Newton, Chris Angel. Heard Motley Cruz getting ready to start a tour down there in Vegas. Move over too, man, because MMA Inside the Cage is taking over the Rio, baby. That's what I'm talking about tonight. We welcome two special guests, UFC veteran Jafiello Tractor Oliveira and Strike Force star Ovince St. Prue OSP will be in the house. We're going to cover that in the second and third rounds. Well, this weekend is a big weekend for Las Vegas and MMA. Not only do you have the Fight Summit, the World MMA Awards, and the Ultimate Fighter finale, Bisping vs. Miller, you have the tryouts for the next season of the Ultimate Fighter. Now, Casey, you're bringing one of your prized pupils, Mr. Tyler Melee Minton, out to Sin City, and one of your closest friends, Tim Moab Style, will also be attending. Talk about how these tryouts work. Man, we've been a part of those tryouts for about five years now. We mm -hmm. went out there for Ultimate Fighter season three okay. uh, up in uh, Boston, BJJ. I took Tim Moab out up there uh, and we had a really good time. You know, uh, it was the first time we ever got to see a Dana White. You know, he was walking around with everybody because, you know, there were only a couple hundred people there. So okay. it was very personal uh, and it's pretty spectacular, man, but it's a lot of work. Now, The Ultimate Fighter, no doubt, is a hit TV show and how they pick those fighters is very interesting. And uh, Casey, You've been critical of the process a few times. You know, we've talked and you've been public about this. You know, we've seen guys with less than stellar records making the show and guys with better resumes getting snubbed. How does that sit with you? Well, I wouldn't say I'm critical of the process, you know, uh, but it is a casting process. You know, it, it is Hollywood uh, mixed with some mixed martial arts. You definitely have to have the talent, but you got to have the talk to go along with it. And if you've got the talk, then you're going to walk the walk. Now, Casey, after this next season of The Ultimate Fighter, they're going to be going to Brazil. Actually, they're going to be holding those tryouts just next month in Sao Paulo. Do you feel like this is a good move for the Ultimate Fighter show? Oh, absolutely, man, because, uh, you know, Brazil uh, showed a resounding support for the DeSantos and Valesquez fight. They said millions of viewers tuned in down there. So, you know, maybe uh, the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil will do down there what the Ultimate Fighter did for America. Uh, very possible. Now, after the break, we'll bring UFC lightweight Rafael Tractor Oliveira into the studio and later on, Strike Force star Ovince St. Prue. Here's your first fight containing your MMA inside the cage, Punch of the Week. It's Austin A.R. Yeah, but but, but, one, but uh, one thing you can tell is in better shape for sure. And to go three five minute rounds, if you've never, uh, if you've ever had to go three five minute rounds, that, oh, the big high kick, left high kick. Oh my God. As a professional fighter, there's a lot of things that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about my opponent. I need to worry about my fans. I don't want to have to be concerned about my blood work. That's why I go to Advanced Sports Labs, and I get my blood work done in an affordable manner. They get it done fast. They send it to the commission, they send it to the promoter, and they send it to me, so I have peace of mind knowing that everything's done properly. As a promoter, they've taken away the headache of trying to get the blood work and get the results to the state. Uh, they have streamlined the process, and they do it at a great affordable rate for the fighter and for the promotion. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. 
Welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage. Cyrus Feast, Casey Oxenden right here with you, and it is second round action. Our first guest tonight is a UFC veteran of 19 fights, and he will welcome Reza Mad Dog Madani to the UFC on January 20th in Nashville. I'm talking about Hafiello Tractor Oliveira. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. Fantastic to have you here on the show. You've been right down the road in Knoxville for years, and we finally got you here. We definitely appreciate you stopping by. Thanks very much to invite me. I'm very, very thankful to be here. My pleasure to be here. I hope to come more times. Okay. Well, now, Tractor Man, the first time I ever saw you, it was, of course, the XFC7. That was the first MMA pro event held in the state of Tennessee. But, man, what really, really caught my eye was an XFC8 when you defeated John Malo very, very soundly. And, of course, you got the eye of the UFC there, man. So when you headed into the UFC, what was it like your first time stepping in there and uh, getting that call up? Oh, that was awesome, man. That was a dream come true, you know, when I come to America. My dream was step in the cage, you know, biggest cage, like 16, 7 people give all that energy, all that rush. Sure. That was awesome, you know. No doubt about it, man. Now, you have to be excited about this fight on the 20th UFC on FX. It's going to be right here in the state of Tennessee where you've made your home. And you're taking on Reza Madadi. This guy's coming out of Sweden. He's Iranian. He's a wrestler, has a lot of talent. Talk about that fight and what your strategy is going to be when you go into that fight. I'm really excited for this fight, you know, principally because here in Nashville, you know, I feel gonna be home and I'm gonna put a pressure on him, you know, this is the first time he's gonna step in the cage, you know, so he doesn't know what's coming. I think he's gonna feel the, the rush, the adrenaline rush, and I'm gonna put the pressure on him, you know what I mean? I'm gonna do my game. He, he won't see me there, you know, I will definitely bring the, this victory. Now, now unfortunately, you know, your last two fights didn't go your way. You took losses to Eve Edwards and uh, Jocelyn Tebow. Do you feel like you are fighting for your job in the UFC with this fight? Yeah, I feel that. I feel that way. You know, I'm fighting for my job. I'm fighting for my family. You know, I try to don't don't leave this pressure on my back. You know, but I'm just gonna uh, for put this pressure behind. I'm gonna just train really hard for the last the next eight weeks and give my best in the cage. Well, you know, we talked about this earlier, how, uh, what the big push over in Brazil is right now, you know, with uh, all those viewers, you said 60 million uh, viewers watched the Dos Santos Cain Velasquez fight down there in Brazil. Uh, are you fighting also for your guys there uh, in, back in Brazil, your family and friends down there? How's that? Uh, also, I, you know, I'm from Brazil, you know, I, I love my hometown, Janga Maica, and I always fight for them there, you know, I'm the only, uh, I'm the only guy for Janga fighting the UFC, you know, for me it's a pleasure and I try to represent them the best I can do inside the cage. And you say uh, for Brazilian fighters, Junior Dos Santos is becoming the face of the country now. Is that what it's looking like? Yeah, you know, UFC is getting big. Uh, I think it was the first time, maybe second time, uh, the, best, the TV company Globo bought the UFC authority mm -hmm. and Junior Dos Santos was like alive, 60 million people watching him. Wow. Yeah, it's tremendous. Now, January 20th, the UFC comes to Nashville, Tennessee in the Bridgestone Arena. It's going to be their first fight on FX. We look forward to see you throw down Hafiello, and best of luck in that fight. Coming up after the break, we got Tractor's teammate, Ovin St. Preux. He's going to talk with us and talk about his big fight in Strike Force with Gegard Mousasi. But first, it's your second fight of the night right here on MMA Inside the Cage. And welcome back, everybody, to the Bank United Center. Marcus Davis tries to squirm out with the underhook escape, but he ends up giving Chuck O'Neill full mount right, right here. Chuck O'Neill raises his base. Oh, nasty right elbow from Cold that Steel. That hurt. And Marcus, that hurt enough for Marcus to give up his back. Yeah, forced to turn his back. Two minutes to go in the fight. Oh, we got a big, oh. giant cut. Giant cut has opened up on Marcus That's Davis. That's one of the worst ones I've ever seen. That is just nasty. Which makes it Seriously. actually easier for Chuck O'Neill to put in the rear naked choke. As you can see, he's going to tie up one arm until he slips the other. The right hand will come under the chin. The blood will just make it easier to slip in. Pressure on the head, obviously, so the blood comes yeah, out. Yeah, the blood's pouring out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing an excellent job of keeping focused. He's got two on one hand control. And oh. I no, do not. Oh, he's going to have the doctor check it. That's OK. Now, if the doctor says go, it's interesting to see where will they start these fighters. They should start them right back where they were. Good move on. Good referee Jorge right Alonso's there. part. Good job, Jorge Alonso. We're down to only like 15 seconds left. 
Well, this will look very good for the judges here in this third and final round. Chuck for may Chuck have stolen this fight. I don't, this is Razor be thin because Marcus was doing such a good job earlier on. Such a good job, but this needs a lasting impression. I mean, if this is a bar fight, you think that Cold Steel wins. That's the bottom Cold line. Steel feels very confident that he won this fight. He feels very confident. Aha! His guy didn't want him to hug him. This guy, he tried to go over and jump on his guy. His guy said, no, get off me. For the winner by split decision, Chuck Cold Steel O'Neill. As a professional fighter, there's a lot of things that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about my opponent. I need to worry about my fans. I don't want to have to be concerned about my blood work. That's why I go to Advanced Sports Labs, and I get my blood work done in an affordable manner. They get it done fast. They send it to the commission, they send it to the promoter, and they send it to me, so I have peace of mind knowing that everything's done properly. As a promoter, they've taken away the headache of trying to get the blood work and get the results to the state. Uh, they have streamlined the process, and they do it at a great, affordable rate for the fighter and for the promotion. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports. Welcome Life. back to MMA Inside the Cage, third round action. And our next guest is a guy that we've seen climb the ranks of Strike Force's light heavyweight division. He'll meet Gegar Mousasi in just two weeks in San Diego, California. We're talking about O. Vince St. Pru. Welcome back to the show, Mr. O. SP, always a pleasure to have you right here on MMA Inside the Cage. You're fighting Musasi, probably the biggest fight of your career. No, actually, no doubt, the biggest fight of your career. Talk about the feeling that you have right now, the pressure, and maybe even a little butterfly action you got going on going into this fight. I mean, there's definitely a lot of pressure going into the fight. Um, it's one of them things, I mean, he's ranked one of the top uh, top 10 to a five pounders oh, yeah. in the world. So, I mean, I definitely have my hands full for this fight. But I mean, going into every fight, I'm extremely nervous going into every fight. Regardless if I'm supposed to win the fight or if I'm not, I'm always nervous going in every, every single one of my fights. But the time I get in there, when the referee say go, is uh, I'm thinking that is my playing field, and in my playing field, I'm gonna let what happened happen. Now, OSP, you are somebody I'm very, very familiar with, man. Back in the early 2000s, when I did my very first show ever, you were part of that. You fought Eric Orta, and it was your very first fight. And then since then, of course, you fought Daniel Crockett on one of my shows, one of the bloodiest fights that's ever been in the region. Uh, and, you know, you were undefeated as an amateur. You started your pro career, and it got a little slow. You started as an 0-2 fighter. And, you know, a lot of people going in, uh, you know, with an 0-2 record might think, you know, my career is over. Uh, uh, you know, I, I really can't make it in this sport, but somehow you started climbing, you started winning, and now you're on a seven fight winning streak, and now you're at the top of your game. Let's go back a little bit and tell me what your mindset was like at that 0-2 position, and what got you in the mode to take it to where it is right now. Well, when I first started off, I really didn't care who I fought. My very first pro fight was uh, against uh, Ronnie Wallace, and uh, going into the fight, I'm thinking I'm going to be fighting a striker, and... Uh, the day of the fight, I find out I'm fighting a three times straight wrestling champ. <laughs> so um, it was one of those situations, kind of you kind of live and learn. Mm -hmm. But um, I did was down at one point in time, and I told myself just keep on trying. And uh, I was at one point in time, I think my record was uh, under 500. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I need to get my a record built up. So I started fighting. I wanted to fight like these easy fights so I can get my record back up. But um, one thing led to another. Every single one of my fights were hard fights. I mean, I fought guys. Um, I fought in the Strike Force show back in uh, April 17th of 2000, uh, 
was it 2000, 2010. 2010. Yeah. Then that summer I fought um, Jason Day, Antoine Britt, Brent, Benji Roy Attic, Bongo Humphreys. Like none of those fights right there was easy fights. So oh, no. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of guys I talked to, they was like, man, the ride I'd have went to, I would have never fought those guys. But I was like, it was one of them things where I didn't have a choice. The fight presented itself and I couldn't find other fights. So it was either that or don't fight at all. And You've got to take a hold of it. That's just the thing. When you get the opportunity to fight for one of these top promotions, you can't turn it down. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Especially with Strike Force. It's one of them deals with, uh, even when I fought with Strike Force for the first time, they was kind of kind of worried about putting me on the card just because I actually had like a four and six, I mean, a four and four record or five and four record. And um, they, were, they told me, well, we can't put you, we might not be able to put you on the card because of your record. And they looked at my loss. She was like, what are you doing fighting these guys early in your career? And I was like, well, I really didn't care. And <laughs> my cardio played a big thing about a lot of my fights. So yeah. my cardio got a lot better. I got stronger. I got faster. And in a way, it's good for me, but bad for my opponents. And it's really good for me because I can impose my will on my opponents. And I tell everybody, no matter if I win or lose, you're going to get a good fight out of me. Now, go ahead, okay. so, now you're a former UT athlete, uh, college athlete, a very good one. Uh, you know, going into this, when when you get into the fights, uh, you know, uh, like like you mentioned, there have been a lot of guys that you go against that are technically supposed to be a, a superior fighter to you. You know what I mean? Uh, but when you get in there, there's something about you. You go in there, you have a push, and you push through it. Do you think that has something to do with your football background, or you know, or is it just something that's inside of you? It's just something that naturally kind of builds inside of you, but as in playing sports, it comes out even more. I wrestled in high school. You learn to push yourself through wrestling. You learn to push yourself through football. It's one of them things. It's, that's why it's always good to, I think, be an athlete because you, you know how to push yourself. Some people have the limitations of uh, trying to quit or whatnot, and um, it's just with me, I can't quit. It's just like it's one of them things. If I go out, I'm going to go out either – and a vicious loss or a vicious win, I'm not going to quit. It's like I can't, I can't, even if I get myself in a bad position, I can't see myself quitting at all because that's not me. I was, never taught to, I was never taught to quit, and every time I do something, I, I do it to win. Now, you are kind of in this impressive stable of African-American fighters in the 205 division that is just blowing up right now. I mean, really, you got guys like Rashad Evans, John Jones, Phil Davis, Rampage Jackson, and the list goes on and on. King Mo Lawal and Strike Force. Talk about being a part of this resurgence in the 205 division because it's not really in any other division like it is 205. Talk about being a part of that stable of fighters. I, I didn't actually think about it until you said it, but um, I mean, you just got a lot of talented guys. It just, it's one of them things where uh, you get those guys like uh, Rampage and uh, Rashad Evans been in the game for a while. John Jones kind of appeared in the scene. I kind of appeared in the same. Phil Davis did the same mm -hmm. thing. It's one of them things where um, a lot of those guys are athletic too. Yeah. So it's it's, it's 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 good when you work hard and when you work hard and actually you get you get fighters that work hard and then become good fighters. But actually, when you have a good work ethic and at the same time you got your athleticism to back it up and stuff yeah. like that, it makes you a pretty good fighter. <laughs> Actually, a lot of people are going to end up scaring, they'd be scared to fight you. Yeah. So, um, do you think the 205 uh, division is the most, most athletic division? Uh, you know, you've worked out with a lot of the bigger, heavier heavyweights uh, also. Do you think that, that the 205ers are? I mean, if you look at it all around, most definitely. Because mm -hmm. with the 205-pounders, you kind of put them in between a, a situation where, I mean, the 205-pounders, you can push the, they can push the fight. But at the same time, they do athletic things, and they in that uh, they they kind of in the in between type stage between a heavyweight and a 185 pounder and stuff. But they, I mean, the 205 pounders when you watch them fight, you don't know what's gonna happen. You can get knocked out, a fight can go decision, a good submission. Um, then after you got 205 pounders who move around like probably 155 pounders, mm -hmm. and those are the type of guys you get in trouble with because yeah. after a while they wear you down and just run circles around you. I mean, for instance, you can see a guy like John Jones. Not too many people are doing what he's doing. He's nah. doing stuff that one of a like, kind. Yeah, he's doing stuff that bantamweights don't even do. So I mean, it's it's it's, it's crazy. Okay, now real quick, real quick fire questions here. You win this fight, you think you're going to the UFC? Real quick, what do you think? Um, might be going, might not. I don't know. It's it's typically I leave I leave it up to the promotion and whatnot. If they want me somewhere, they'll they'll put me somewhere. Do you think you'll have a title fight after this? Do you think you're ready for a title fight? Um, I think I should. I think I'll be ready for a title fight. I mean, it's, it's vacant right now, and I think um, I'm if I end up winning this fight, I think I should be one of the top contenders 
who uh, is fighting for the title. Last, last, question, last question. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, last question here. After this fight, who do you want to fight? And um, who's, who's in your head that you really would love to get into the cage with? Well, I don't know. It just it's, it's one of them things. Uh, during my fight, I had a uh, I remember I called out Gegard and Babu, and uh, they gave me Gegard. And what is one of them things now? It's just like who do I want to fight next? And I'm like, man, okay, if I'm gonna fight, if I'm fighting the top ten guy right now, obviously the next guy I'm gonna fight is gonna probably be top fifteen. So I mean, whoever's up in the top fifteen rankings, I mean. There it is. Hey, we talked to King Mo, and King Mo said he fights. He, <laughs> he said he didn't know if he was ready. He goes, but he, he'll fight you, I mean, because you, you know he has a ton of confidence in anyway. <laughs> But uh, we look guy. forward to it, man. The event's going to be great. you got Melendez and Masvidal on that one. Then, of course, yourself and uh, the big fight against Musasi. Cyborg Santos is going to be there. That's going to be the next Strike Force card. But right now, we got to get right to it. It's your MMA Inside the Cage main event of the week. Okay, San has youth on, youth on his side tonight. He's five years younger. Two-inch height and two-inch reach advantage for Ovin St. Pru. Three five-minute rounds. Our referee in charge, Kim Winslow. Red, are you ready? Blue, are you ready? Fight! Three rounds of the Strike Force Light Heavyweight Division. Ovin St. Pru in the red gloves and promotional newcomer Joe Kason in the blue. Kaysan with the straight right through the guard of St. Prue, trying to walk him down early. There's a leg kick. Kaysan really quick here. Yeah, and as good a wrestler as he is, he loves to knock people out. St. Prue fighting out of the southpaw position. Tag Kaysan coming in with the left hand. And in the seven months since he, we last saw him in a strike force cage, St. Prue's been traveling, training with Team Quest to Mecula with Dan Henderson, who, of course, headlines next Saturday's card to Chicago against Fedor. Also spent some time at the Grudge Training Center in Colorado with Trevor Whitman. That knee rocked Kaysan. And Kaysan now hanging on for dear life. It walked right into that one. And I tell you what, St. Through. Looks like the rest has done him well. He's got his back now. He's got the one hook in. Landing some crushing left hands from underneath the armpit. Kaysan trying to block, but he can't block what you can't see, Stephen. No, you can't. St. Prue not even worried about getting a submission here with the hooks. Just blasting away. Round and pound, and that is it. OSP with the first round TKO. And make it eight in a row for a guy who may have just graduated to the Strike Force Big Show. He is a perfect 4-0 here in Strike Force. And Pat, a lot of times the principles of martial arts is to use your opponent's aggression against him. That's exactly what OSP did with that knee. Advanced Sports Lab is always a great experience. You go in, you get your blood drawn, they take care of all the paperwork for you, they send your results to the commission and to the promoter so I can just focus on being a professional fighter and getting on the fight. Advanced Sports Labs, expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world from world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event! To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go! Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Lab. Well, it's time to close it out. Next week, a full report from the Fight Summit in Las Vegas with some of the biggest interviews that we've ever had right here on this show. Now, Casey, how about closing it out with the curtain call? All right, well, this week's curtain call has to do, once again, with the ultimate fighter trials that are going down this weekend in Las Vegas. Remember, all of you aspiring fighters out there that are looking to make that trip across the country know it's gonna be worth it, man. Some of the biggest names and some of the biggest eyes are gonna be right on you. And whether you make it or not, 
It's all worth it, man, because you get your minute and a half in front of the two biggest dogs in the industry. Okay, well, find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and email any questions or comments to MMAInsideTheCage at gmail.com. I'm Cyrus Speaks. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week Inside, Inside the Cage. cage.